Yeah, it was something on my mind I was thinking about for a little while. And um, I was wondering why in the past, I guess, 50 to 30 years that there hadn't been a, um, a national championship in either basketball or football in the 1A uh, division of the NCAA. Why hadn't there been an HBCU that was a national championship? That was a national champion on, on that level. I try to figure it out. I, I have my opinion. I'm going to share them with you on it. Because since then, since they've been allowing black people to play at the Ohio States and in the SECs um, in the past 30 years, there have been black people on the team. So evidently, it's not that black players can't perform at that level because they're on the national championship team. I don't think there has been any uh, all-white school, all-white team that has won a national championship um, in quite some time. I could be wrong. Some of you all that's watching this might research that uh, to see when the last time an all-white team has won the NCAA uh, basketball tournament, which is a little more fair than the um, football tournament, which is determined by the um, by the press and not actually by playing. Uh, you know, they had this little the little four teams that you know the regular round robin that they normally use to determine the football in that um, FBS. Uh, but all those teams have, and every one of the football teams has black players that are on it. And the basketball teams, um, from my recollection, have the same. And I was wondering why, if HBCUs are historically black colleges and universities, why aren't black people, who the top 25 players, top 100 players in either basketball or football, why aren't they choosing to go to the HBCUs? Um, I'm thinking that it's TV. And even though NCAA says it's supposed to be equal and, you know, you're not giving gifts and you don't get this, that and the other. We all know that's been going on for years with the uh, additions and the pluses. But here we are, 2020, we had a lot of different issues and, you know, burning down, taking down statues and burning Confederate flags and doing everything, trying to create a change. Um, when the SEC, Southeastern Conference, all those schools are in Confederate territory. They're actually considered Confederate areas um, from the Confederate War. Uh, many things we saw with Martin Luther King and the different things happened in Alabama and various states, Mississippi. Um, and you know, now it's different, a little different from them, but there, there are still certain things that we know that may occur in some of those areas. But people will, top black athletes will still sign up for Alabama to go play football. Um, and they were one of the last schools that wanted to take uh, black, black players because uh, at the time, Bear Bryant said he was still going to show that you know, he, could, he could win a national championship with all, all uh, white players. But when it didn't happen, he got fired and they said, hey, we need to bring him in. So while we're making change, I think, and this is my challenge to some of the top um, athletes, in basketball and football is, you know, you're considered that by your AAU and you're ranked by the newspapers and everything else that, you know, you take some of those talents too. Um, the HBCUs in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, 36% of NFL uh, kids that got drafted from college came from HBCUs. Now it's down to like one or two percent. That's the, is that the progress that we was going for? Is getting away from, well, we're going to get away from the black people. We're going to go over here. Um, I'm sure because, same as me, watching TV, um, you see those teams on TV, so your, your mind gets conditioned to, hey, this is where I need to go to play. If you have talent, you can play and make it to the next level, the pro level. If you have real talent, you can do it, you, you do it um, from whatever school you go to. So that's something to keep in mind. I know the TV and definitely playing for the ACC, Big Ten, uh, Big 12, Pac-12 do help some players that are average players. 
um, get to the next level. And then we see at the next level that they're not as good as they were in college, where they might have been great at Duke, but then they get into pros and it's like, mm, eh, this guy that's over here from Rutgers was better. This guy over here from Murray State, he's better. You know what I mean? If you can play, then you can play. It doesn't matter where you go. They're still going to see you. They're still going to notice you. I don't think Scotty Pippen was at a um, was at a Big Twelve, a Big Conference. Ben Wallace, Oakley, none of them came from those schools. They actually came from HBCUs, not not Scotty, but those two, Ben Wallace, they came from HBCUs. So if you can play, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? You're building while you're at these other schools, ACC, SEC. Big Ten, Big Twelve, who whose schools are you building? You get out, and we appreciate you coming out in the uh, different protests in the different areas um, to support the black cause. You all, uh, some people start black businesses and they let that be known, but they won't send their kids send send their kids to these black schools so that the black schools can get better. So you can get a quality education. As we can see from the vice president that's there now, um, that came from Howard, we can, you can get a, a quality education, and it's been that way. Um, it doesn't have to be the best kept secret. When a lot of black kids wake up and they dream, they want to be able to go to the schools they see on TV. They want to go to Ohio State. They want to go to Michigan. They want to go to, they see uh, LSU and Alabama on TV playing football and, uh, and uh, basketball. And this goes for men and women that you don't have to go, which some players have done, you don't have to go to UConn to make it to the pros. Does it help that you make it on that team? Of course, because the, the, the GMs are looking and they don't know if you're good or bad. Oh, yeah, they played at UConn. Yeah, we're automatically going to get them. Okay, then you get there and you're average. So you don't have to go to these schools. The schools benefit from your being there. The alumni, when people support winners, if Notre Dame wins, they have a big fan base. So, of course, they're going to bring in more money and sell more merchandise and bring in more students because they want to be associated with winners. Alabama wins. They're going to bring in more people, more merchandise. They're more popular. They sell more. If you, there are people, like I said, Winning brings in corporate sponsorship as well. So the things that we can do to help um, ourselves, this is not anything against any other uh, race. This is just for those people that might be interested in furthering along uh, the black race and helping to build some of the things to help in our uh, infrastructure and make your voice heard more. You can do it. We, you've been doing it, but there's a way to make your education and not complaining about how somebody else educates you. You chose to go to these other places, the PWIs. You, your alumni of, of another a PWI school, your alumni of Maryland, your alumni of North Carolina, are you donating your money to uh, A&T? Probably not. You could probably give it to the school that you feel helped you, gave you a degree, helped you out in your career. So you're probably going to give it to North Carolina. You're going to give your alumni money to them. But if you went and you were able to go to the pros from a HBCU, you're more likely to go back and give money to that HBCU. If you had the top a while back, when I was coming up, they had the Fab Five. They all went to Michigan. They had a senior that played on the team too, but they had the Fab Five decided. If five players, if those same five players had ended up at Morgan State, at Coppin State, and they blew through and went into the national championship game, do you think that would have been more popular? That would have made Morgan State more popular. That would have made Coppin State more popular. People would have opened their eyes like, oh, wait a minute, this little school over here, HBCU, let me check that out. That's the thing, is that now, right now, we have both races and all races that want to go, whether they're from Africa, whether they're African-American, whether they're um, uh, Americans, they're white Americans, Asian Americans, when they see these schools on, 
when they see these schools on TV, they want to go. And that's nothing against them. That's natural. Because this is what your mind sees. This is what you see as the popular thing to do. But that's something that we need to check. 